people. I come where I am now. I have the enormous generosity of the Saanich people to have welcomed me to that territory. There are four First Nations in my ride in the Saanich Gulf Islands. Uh, one of them is uh, Sartlip, where Adam Olson is a member of that First Nation, and you probably all know he's interim leader of the Green Party of British Columbia. Uh, you know, we're the only party of the traditional parties. Now, I actually can describe the Green Party as one of the, the big parties. We got, we got two MPs in the House of Commons, and that's, um, that's great. We will soon have many more. But we're the only of the main parties that's ever had a First Nations person lead a party. There's been an Indian party that has had, of course, but, uh, and we don't even make any, don't think about it much. But when I think about uh, Adam Olson as a, as a dear friend of mine, like a brother to me, and amazing, uh, I was at an event on Monday where Chief Don Tom, uh, Chief of Sartlet First Nation, talked about green values and that the Saanich people were, and I, I'm all, it's really hard to repeat this without sounding, it's just overwhelming to me, but they really felt that in Ottawa, my voice was representing their values. And that's how I think you're feeling now, Audrey, of what it would be like to have Lynn Corby be your voice in Ottawa, to represent this community, this constituency, work for you as the member of parliament from this new riding of Burnaby North Seymour. We as Greens have a whole different approach to politics. We don't think it's about politics, we think it's about democracy. These are very different attitudes. We see too many political parties wasting a lot of their time and energy trying to kneecap each other, gain a little bit of electoral ground, short-term partisan advantage, overtaking what's important for Canada. We had an event in my riding on Monday, an amazing thing. I mean, I was, <laughs> we had 900 people show up because the Right Honorable Joe Clark spoke at a Green Party event. Now wrap your mind around that sentence. Um, and as I thanked him, I said to him, it was wonderful to have someone here who uh, was not yet a member of the Green Party. So he, he chuckled, because he has no political party. He never joined the Conservatives after the uh, Reform Alliance takeover. Anyway, one of the things that he said there was that we need members of Parliament. He actually said we need more members of Parliament, like not me, uh, who will put Parliament ahead of the party. This is what I mean about our commitment is to democracy, to working for our constituents as hard as we can, ethically, honestly, we can make mistakes, but we will be working in your interests and we are open to your ideas. I hold town hall meetings in my riding. I'm just, by tomorrow night on Saturna, We'll have completed nine town hall meetings in the last couple of weeks. We do them twice a year. It's the way I find out what my bosses want me to do. So my boss is the people in my community. It's a very different approach. We don't have whipped votes. So you'll hear people talking about how, what difference do Green MPs make. So I'm going to tell you the difference we make as a group, as a caucus, and I'll talk about the difference Lynn will make. Here's how the next election is likely to go, and you need to think about this, hang on to it, and explain it to other people. It's likely to be a minority parliament. No party is going to win a majority of the seats. It's very likely. I don't think there's any chance of Stephen Harper's party doing well at all. But either the Liberals or the NDP will have a minority of the seats. Nobody will have a majority. Now, we know what happened between 2006 and 2011 only because the Liberals and the NDP couldn't stand to work with each other, Stephen Harper was Prime Minister from 2006 to 2011. And in that time, he canceled all our climate plans, he canceled the Coloma Accord, he canceled universal child care. He started the process of destroying our environmental laws. You know, the worst of the laws was C-38, and he didn't get away with that omnibus bill until he had a majority. But he did a lot of damage to environmental assessment and did a lot of damage to the National Energy Board Act in the period when he only had a minority by playing one party off against the other, knowing that they wouldn't want to go to an election until they felt they were ready, had enough money saved up. It's not that I blame any of the individual members of parliament with whom I work. They're wonderful people, frankly, in all the parties. They're quite wonderful people. They get pulled into political life because somebody goes to them and says, look, you're a great community leader. 
you'd be wonderful as the member of parliament for the conservatives or the liberals or the new democrats fill in the blank and they're earnest they they're not running for i would public impression of politicians to the contrary the people i know in public life and the mps i know in parliament did not take on this challenge because they wanted to get rich or because they were planning to be corrupt. They took on the talent challenge because they love Canada and they think they can do something good. And it's not till after they've won their seat that, they're, that they go to whatever training each party calls it. They generally call it boot camp. And that's where the newly elected members of Parliament are told, here's the deal. You do what you're told. You do not say what you're thinking or what your constituents want you to say. We're going to give you a script and you're going to read it. And we're going to tell you how to vote. And if you don't vote the way you're told, you'll be punished. Now that is really horrific for good people. So we want to change the whole culture of Parliament. We just don't guarantee that Green Party members of Parliament won't have whipped votes or that Green Party members of Parliament will represent their constituents. With enough Greens elected, none of the other parties will be able to get away with it anymore. It will fundamentally change the way that Parliament functions, restore respect within Parliament, reduce the power of the Prime Minister's office. That's a key goal. That must be done. Get rid of first past the post. And one of the things that would have made all the difference in 2006 when there was that minority conservative <coughs> rule by Stephen Harper, would have been a lot of Green MPs. Yeah, less than the other parties, okay. But enough to say, no way should Stephen Harper be Prime Minister with a minority of support across Canada. The majority of Canadians want climate action. The majority of Canadians elected a majority of members of Parliament in the New Democratic Party, the Liberal Party, and the Bloc. Why aren't we working together? Because that's what Canadians would want. Well, we know why they don't. They don't they're not willing to, over, to overcome this hyper-partisan nonsense. So, number one, this election is going to change everything because we can and will elect a lot of Green members of Parliament. And one of them will be Lynn Cormie. Yeah. Because, as Audrey was saying, Lynn is a protector. Lynn put herself on the line. Kinder Morgan sued Lynn for $5 million. Did she quake and go into her home and shut the door and go into the closet and have a few quiet sobs? No. She said, okay, if they're going to sue me anyway, I might as well get arrested. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that I've never been arrested. I think that condition will soon end. But in any case, I, I uh, when Lynn got arrested, I said to my staff, I was in Ottawa, and I said, gee, can I get there in time to join her and Bernie Mountain and get arrested? Well, it might interfere with going to Lima for the climate negotiation. So, depending, in any case, I am overwhelmed by the courage, the energy, the passion, the brilliance of someone who spent her life working in science and then sees that the system in which we're living right now has decided that science is dangerous because it informs us to make wise choices. So we muzzle the scientists, we gag the scientists, we fire the scientists. We want to go boldly forth under Stephen Harper's agenda with putting all our economic eggs in the bitumen basket and think that somehow the wealth at the top of the 1% is justification for leaving behind the 99%. So social justice gets ignored, fairness gets ignored, the climate crisis gets ignored. Local democratic rights of a community like Burnaby to say no to Kinder Morgan get ignored. Now's the time to stand up. And Lynn Cormie, to my eternal amazement and gratitude, has stood up. She will be your next member of parliament. Think about how wonderful that will be. There is no MP in this riding now. There is no incumbent. To have someone working for you who is so magnificent that you will, for the first time in your life, feel, 
I am so happy with my <laughs> member of parliament. I can't wait to go out and tell other people, that's my member of parliament. So with that, I want to introduce to you your next member of parliament, Lynn Corbin. <laughs> Uh, painfully 
I think is the right word, aware of the evidence for climate change. I'm aware that it's happening now. I'm aware uh, that it is caused by the fossil fuels that we are burning. And um, I know that, and you all know, there's changes that are happening around the globe right now, changes that are happening in our Salish Sea. Our cold water is absorbing carbon dioxide. It's becoming acidified. Uh, the shellfish larvae are not, de not developing properly. We're losing biodiversity at rapid rates, and we don't even know what all is happening because, as Elizabeth mentioned, we fired our environmental scientists. And the ones we have less, left aren't there to, t to tell us. They're not reporting back to us. So I find this whole situation unacceptable. And because it's unacceptable, um, I don't accept it. I get out there and do stuff. I've been writing letters and meeting with my members of parliament and writing op-eds, and um, along with members of Broke and other people um, being sued by Kinder Morgan. And um, looking at my, my co-arrestee, Ruth, um, we rode the paddy wagon together. <laughs> um, I'm grateful um, to Ruth. And, um, but all of those things, I, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. As a citizen, there's not too much farther to go um, until Elizabeth May gives you a call and says, um, I need you in Parliament. <laughs> um, and I do. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a big step. It, for me, it's a huge sacrifice. Um, I, love, I love my career. I love what I do. I love the science I do. Um, one of my favorite PhD students ever is in the audience with her baby tonight, <laughs> Laura Elton. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to know more about our research, if you can't corner me, you can corner Laura. Um, and it's always been a pleasure. And one of the great pleasures of doing research is to work with our graduate students. Um, and I just, I just, it's, it's really hard, um, really, really hard to, to consider the sacrifices of not doing that. But, the last few years when I go to give a science talk, usually we go speak for 50 minutes, that's what I'm used to doing, so I'm just kidding, I won't get it. <laughs> um, I reserve the last 10 minutes to talk about climate change. And I, and I always mention that, you know, I, I, I try to stay focused on my science, but when the science papers come in my inbox and there's something that would have really excited me to read it, I, it it's, the energy is not in the same place anymore because I'm so distracted by what's happening in our world. And um, so, I guess I'll tell my little story. It's hard to give two speeches in the, in the night because I'm so used to not wanting to repeat myself. <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself, but with apologies to those of you who are here twice. Uh, I, want to, I want to talk about November 14, 2014, when uh, Justice Cullen uh, awarded the injunction to Kinder Morgan and, uh, against the protesters. It happens that on that very day, Philae, a little science robot, landed on a comet that is 590 million kilometers away. So that's six times as far away from Earth as the sun. And that comet was moving at 135,000 kilometers per hour at the time that we landed a little robot on it. So that's pretty amazing accomplishment. So if you have that in perspective and you step back and you say, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong here? We've got this climate thing, we've got this democracy thing. It's not rocket science. We can solve those problems. We can solve those problems. So why aren't we solving those problems? What's the big problem? So you step back and you heard from Elizabeth about the issues with democracy and the hyper-partisanship and the fact that we're not having debates in Parliament and that votes are whipped and that the PMO's office is, or the PMO is controlling everything. And you have to say, okay, um, there's a number of things we can do. Um, and the world has enough politicians who memorize speeches ahead of time and repeat them robotically. I'm so happy that Lynn will be in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> the robots. Um, I just want to talk about diversity. 
diversity and the importance of diversity. Because right now in Canada, we basically have Stephen Harper making policy. Stephen Harper, one brain. Stephen Harper is a smart man. He's a smart man. But no individual is that smart. Um, social science studies have shown over and over again in different contexts. In the context of women in business or women in science, they show that when you bring women in, when you bring diversity in, a group makes better decisions. And when they look at team-based learning in, in education, where I've been studying uh, methods of, of improving retention, we learn that in a group, the group will make a better decision than the smartest person in the group. <laughs> Except sometimes the smartest person in the group doesn't get it. They don't realize that. And sometimes the smartest person in the room wants to make all the decisions themselves. So. It's no surprise with Stephen Harper taking so much control and focusing all the power in the Prime Minister's office that we've had a string of bad decisions, and it's really frightening. So what we need is we need people to stop mindlessly voting party lines, not that everybody does that, but too many people do that, and to come out. You guys obviously don't do that. You're out here at a meeting on a horrible night. Um, and if we can get people to pay attention to the candidates and vote for candidates who will stand up in parliament, whatever party they're for, and help, as Elizabeth has described, change the culture in parliament, change the way things are done, so that we will have a situation where we can have that brilliance of a diverse group working together to come up with creative, robust solutions to difficult problems. That's how we get started. The other thing is that as a scientist, I want to bring data back to the decisions. <laughs> so we're going to get those environmental scientists rehired, and we're going to let them tell us what we need to hear so that we can make good decisions. We're going to bring back long-form census. We're going to do all of those things as well. And when we have this functioning parliament, we're going to send Elizabeth May in December to COP21 to be a leader, to represent Canada, to have a team that will set an example for real change. And we know she can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll also push for a uh, fee and dividend policy for controlling co carbon emissions. And the fee and dividend, although it's only in a small way, it will also help offset inequality. I think Canadians are under an illusion that inequality is something that the U.S. is a problem down there. Our inequality is atrocious, okay? 86, the, the, the most wealthy 86 families, I'm talking individual families, I'm not talking 86, you know, 86 families have more wealth in Canada than the bottom 11 million of us. That's a pretty intense concentration of wealth. The bottom half of our population, 50% of Can Can Canadians, have only 6% of the wealth in this country. So when we talk about pipelines and we are bombarded with advertising paid by these folks, we need to question this business about these fossil fuel infrastructure projects being necessary for our economy. And when people like Robin Allen take a closer look for us and report back, just a minute, <laughs> there's only 35 jobs there. Well, that was the, that was, anyway, 35 jobs there. And their, you know, Morgan is paying, what, a million and a half on average a year in taxes. They're not pouring money into our economy. Uh, it's not a Canadian owned company. In what way is this good for our economy? It's lining the pockets of these guys up here who are already rich. Pipeline politics is not the left versus the right. Pipeline politics is the wealthy. It's up-down politics. It's not left-right politics. So we need to pay attention to that, and we need to not allow issues that matter to us, like affordable housing and a stable pension plan and national child care and health care, student debt, uh, the list goes on and on. Those things are not to be traded. That's not something that we are using for bargaining chips for destruction of our environment. There's more jobs in clean tech than there are in fossil fuel industries in Canada. We don't need to buy into those arguments. Um, <laughs> Second time around, it's all for everyone. 
we've talked about democracy and we've talked about the environment and, I th and, and the economy a little bit. I do want to make a point that obviously this is all quite superficial and this is the launch of the campaign. You're going to see lots of me or have lots of opportunities. I want to hold lots of town hall-ish things while I'm campaigning and then once I'm your MP in Ottawa, another place where um, Elizabeth has been an amazing mentor is her town halls. So I had the honor of attending one two weeks ago. It was an amazing experience. Um, the room was packed. There were hundreds of people there. I don't know how many hundreds, but it was a big room. And twice a year, Elizabeth goes to nine places in her riding and presents on the last sitting of Parliament. She talks about um, what happened in Parliament, what bills were brought, what, how, what, what, what was the discussion, what was the outcome, and then she takes questions on all sorts of things. And so the people in her riding know what she's doing. They, she, she reports on what she has been doing. And, um, and I'm going to pledge to do the same thing. And, uh, <laughs> about these diverse groups making the best decisions. And I think that we as a community are really diverse. This riding, I think, wherever Pete is, I'm not sure, but um, it, one of the most ethnically diverse ridings in Canada. And Burnaby Bur 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 is. Oh, not the riding, the city of yeah. Burnaby. But the riding's pretty diverse. <laughs> and, you know, most of us have, well, my, my family, for example, we immigrated here uh, three generations and four generations ago. And we all bring something different. We all bring something new, and that's important in, in terms of having these conversations. But what's really important is the something old. The Aboriginal peoples who have belonged to this land for countless generations and have taken the stewardship of this land as a sacred responsibility. Those voices need to be part of the conversations that we have, and those voices need to be respected and heard and not just um, the traditional voices, the voices that have become integrated into our system, but we need to listen to the voices of the Klebona keepers and the people at the Unistoten camp and the frontline defenders all across this country who are currently being basically abused and walked over and downstream of major projects. Um, they need our support and we as a government already <laughs> <laughs> we, we as a government should not be opposing these people. We should be, they're on our side. They're standing up for our environment. And I, this, not ours, not theirs, the, the, the environment that we all share. And we need to be listening and we need to be supporting. And so I also pledge to support, not just in the formal channels of government that frustrate um, many of these people, but to continue, as I leave activism and move into politics, to continue to support those frontline defenders.